I'm not Mort. These are not miniatures. This is not my vlog. Yes, it has been a while, but I'm back. This long, long-awaited episode is going to be about giant spiders. Now, for the purposes of my games, because there's a huge variety of different sized toy and miniature spiders out there, I have categorised them into three main categories. These categories are based around the base size which the spiders fit best on, and each of the three categories have their own stat block. First up, these spiders are... Category 1s. They are the classic plastic Warhammer Quest spiders, which came on a sprue with a bat and a rat and a snotling. This sprue was later released on its own in packs of five as the Warhammer Fantasy Swarm set. I went for a simple but effective paint job on these. As you can see, they're mostly brown with red eyes. Not much to write home about, but I think they came out rather nicely. After painting, I mounted them on 25mm standard bases, detailed with textured plastic card. Here's one alongside Lekyar for scale. Here's three more Warhammer Quest spiders. I originally painted these at some point in the early 2000s, and left them unbased. So while I was painting up the seven new spiders, I touched up and based these three, giving me a grand total of 10 Warhammer Quest spiders. I hope you've learned something from this. Moving on, these three are Category 2s. They are metal pieces made by cobblestone castings. They're part of the High Adventure slash Lost Worlds range. So I guess they're supposed to be jungle spiders to be fought by men in pith helmets with Winchester rifles. But they work just as well for dungeon spiders, which is of course what I'm using them for. Again, the paint jobs aren't anything special, but these are lovely old school sculpts, and they came out rather nicely. I've mounted these on those newfangled 32mm round bases. Here's one with Lekyar for scale. Another category 2 here. This one is made by Reaper Miniatures. It's a metal piece from one of their older ranges. I don't remember which one. This spider came with these wonderfully gruesome cocooned victims. These two pieces are perfect dungeon dressing for when you want to set the scene of a spider's lair. As you can probably see, this spider's been mounted on a 40mm round base, and I had to bend the legs a little bit to get it to fit. What with it being a nice old metal model, this proved quite easy. Here it is with Lekyar for scale. I went for a red colour scheme with bright green eyes on this one. I'm not sure what my original thinking was, but when it came to using it in the game, I used this to represent the fact that this spider caused poison damage rather than paralysis damage. Category 3s are the biggest category of all. These are plastic Warhammer Forest Goblin spiders, mounted on oval bases and without the awful goblin riders that came with them. What's nice about these spiders is they come in a few different variants, with spiky, scaly, or leathery details on their abdomens. 
I used green stuff to sculpt a kind of replica of this detail onto the thorax to cover up the spots where the goblins would have sat. And considering my rather basic sculpting skills, I think they came out rather well. Painting wise, I went with a brown and dull green colour scheme inspired by the giant spiders in Legend of Grimrock. Hmm, now that I look back at that game footage, there's not actually any green on those spiders, is there? Okay, so turns out I don't actually know where the idea for that colour scheme came from. Anyway, here's one of them with Fleckyar for scale. And now, with a paint job definitely inspired by the ones in Legend of Grimrock, here are some spider eggs. These are from the Dungeons and Lasers Fantasy Starter Set. I added a bit of variety to these using some plastic spiders of unknown origin. If you recognise these little spiders and have any idea what kit they might have come from, let me know in the comments below. Here's Hlekiar with them for the purposes of scale. We continue with a man with a spider on his head. Hello! So yeah, when I said Category 3 spiders were the largest, I lied. Well, actually I suppose Phil Jupiter said it, but either way, it was a lie. This is my colossal boss spider, mounted on a 100mm round base, making its size category f oh fuck. The exact origins of this spider are a mystery to me. I originally came across this poor thing in a raid on Area 51. Spare parts bin. As you can see, it was missing pretty much all its legs, but I knew it had potential, so I bought it with the aim of it being a restoration project. Now initially, I was under the impression that this rather bulky piece of lead was an old piece by Grenadier, Heritage or RAFM, but it had no identifying marks and try as I might, I couldn't find a listing for it anywhere. So I asked if anyone on Facebook recognised it. And my friend Frank suggested that it might be a metal recasting of an old Halloween spider. So that's the answer I'm going to go with until proven otherwise. If it happens you know better and recognise this spider from somewhere, please let me know in the comments below. So the first thing I did towards the restoration was to try and remove the rather ragged mold lines and sculpt over these unsightly holes with some green stuff. For the legs, I cut up this toy tarantula which I think came from a pound shop. I used paper clips to pin the new plastic legs onto the stumps of the old metal ones. The sculpting on the new legs matches the original quite well, and once I had it painted, the difference was almost unnoticeable. Yeah, Lekyar is with it for scale, hmm? Due to the way I did the legs, this spider's probably ended up with the wrong number of knee joints. But you know what? This creature has been mutated to titanic size by the presence of dark magic, so I don't think it really matters if it's a bit anatomically bizarre. These web cocoons of more pieces by <laughs> Note to self, never do that again. These came as a stretch goal in one of the crowdfunding things, although I believe they are now available as part of a commercial set. And they're rather nice pieces, very detailed and quite easy to paint. I particularly like the tiny spiders crawling all over them. Like with the eggs, these are perfect dungeon dressing for a spider's lair. The humanoid piece is great for representing a victim of the spiders that the heroes need to rescue before they get eaten and that middle bit could double as a small spider swarm if needed. Here's Flecchio with them for scale. 
You know what? I don't think he really wants to be there. And that's about it for this vlog. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. And if you're subscribed to my channel, like this video. More to Miniatures Vlog will return. Probably. Subscribe for Mort.